Good morning, artists. Welcome to Art Adventures Live. I'm Mr. Andy, the studio program's manager here at Jaws and Art Museum, which means I get to make art with people like you that visit our museum. Art Adventures is a drop-in art experience that's free for museum members and happens every Friday morning at the museum throughout the year with our friend Miss Therese, who's watching from home and can answer your questions today in the comments below. In this time of uh, social distancing, we, of course, are all keeping each other safe by staying at home, so I will be bringing Art Adventures to you each week so we can make art together from the comfort of your home. For a full list of all the upcoming um, Art Adventures through June, visit uh, jawson.org. Uh, uh, also posted, along with each week's uh, art uh, lesson, the description for what we, the art that we will be creating together, will be a full list of materials that you'll need to make some art with, with me each week. Uh, and we'll also post a recording of each video to that website. So if you don't have your materials today, you can uh, follow, just watch along, and then go back and uh, make art with me when you have the time. Today, uh, each week, we are going to be inspired by a different artist or artwork from the galleries and create a masterpiece while learning what makes these works of art uh, so special and how these works of art were made. This week, we will be inspired by all the different animals here at Jaws and Art Museum. Uh, like zoos, art museums are full of animals, only we don't have to feed our animals or clean up after museum animals. Uh, just like you, artists love to draw and paint animals. Ever since people have lived in caves, people have been making art about animals. Artists love to draw and paint, draw, paint, and sculpt all the different animal shapes. See if you can find the different shapes in this relief of a buffalo. You see the, the shape of the head, the shape of the body, the legs, and the tail. Artists love to draw and paint and sculpt different animal textures. Textures is the way something feels, like these woolly sheep. And of course, artists love to draw, paint, and sculpt all the beautiful colors and patterns. Look at the interesting shapes, the feathery feathers, and beautiful patterns this artist used to create these peacocks on this 19th century Japanese screen from our galleries. Sometimes, artists like to draw and paint pets like this painting by Eastman Johnson of his daughter Ethel and her tiny bunny. You see her bunny in her arms? Sometimes artists create pictures of animals they, that might live near their home, animals they see all the time, like this staring contest with a bunch of cows by Jamie Wyeth. Other artists like to paint exotic animals from faraway places like this picture by French painter Jean-Leon Jerome, called The Grief of the Pasha. Do you see the orange and black tiger on the, on the rug with the Pasha? <laughs> That's a tiger. A tiger, not a lion, a tiger, not a panther, a lion with stripes. Some artists make animals that look super real, almost real enough to pet like the cat in this picture uh, called Russian Beauty from 1865. Do you see this woman's cat on the balcony? The furry cat we could almost pet. Or this scientific illustration of a tiny mouse by Carl Bodmer. In the time before photographs, Carl Bodmer carefully examined and looked at this tiny mouse to make a picture almost like a photograph. Other artists make pictures of animals in their own unique style. They're not concerned about making each animal look like a photograph, like this curious looking cow by Alex Katz. Animals can help add action or movement to a picture, like this startled horse in a hailstorm by Thomas Hart Bitten. Here's a closer picture of that horse. This horse looks, looks like this horse was frightened and surprised by that lightning strike behind it. Or this, this uh, sculpture of a Bronco Buster by Fred McRimmington is full of action. This Bronco Buster is about to get bucked off that Bronco. 
Animals can tell a story, like this narrative by Ogala, Ogallala Lakota artist Arthur Amote, Amio, of a woman being rescued from a flood by a spirit in the form of the eagle. So we can see this eagle lifting this woman out of the flood waters. One thing that makes art museum animals even more interesting than animals at a zoo or is we can come to an art museum, you can find animals that are imaginary or mythical. These are animals you could never see in real life. Animals you can never have as a pet. Animals you could never see at the zoo because they only exist in stories, legends, or artists' imaginations. This sculpture was made by, in China almost 2,000 years ago to scare off evil spirits. This beast called a Zenmushu combines lots of animals, animal body parts. We can see the body of a lion. If we look at the legs, they, they each have hooves like a deer. So we can see the legs of a deer. And even a human face with long horns and flame-like supernatural spikes, sharp spikes radiating off its body. Each of you is going to create, a, each of you now, together, we, together, are going to create our own imaginary animal. We're going to combine several different animals together, just like this. We're going to take lots of different animals, and we're going to combine them together, mixing them up kind of like making brownies. When you make brownies at home, if you help make brownies at home, we have to take all of our ingredients and put them into a bowl and mix them together. We're going to take lots of different animal ingredients, like the head of a, maybe a head of a rhinoceros and the tail of a raccoon, and mix them together to make a mixed up animal that's your very own. We're going to go one step at a time, thinking about the shape, texture, and pattern of each animal body part as we put our animals together. Before you make your own animal, we'll make one together. So I'll need your suggestions for each animal ingredient. And then I'll put those animals, those ingredients together. I'll put our recipe together here on, my, on the easel. And as I do that, you can follow along at home. Uh, you can follow along at home, and then it will be your turn to create an animal using your own recipe. So start thinking about interesting animal ingredients. And before we begin, let's uh, take a look at the supplies, our materials that we'll need today. So grab your supply bag. Remember, if you need supplies, if you need supplies, each week a supply bag will be out front of our atrium entrance with all the materials you'll need for uh, our June art adventures. Today in our, in our May art adventure bag, our pink art adventure bag for May, we'll pull out the materials we need to make our mixed up animal. Hopefully you have some, we'll, uh, grab some sketch paper from around your house, and then uh, we'll use we'll need one p big piece of all media paper or heavy drawing paper that we can that we can paint that we can that will hold our paint. We also need some crayons to do some to, to sketch and draw. We'll need some paints to add color and pattern. So um, watercolor paints. If we don't have watercolor paints, we could add color and pattern with crayons or colored pencils, markers. We'll need a paintbrush. If we're going to paint, we need a paintbrush. And then also a cup of water. So uh, when, we be, when we begin to paint, we'll need a cup of water to paint, to add our paint. So, uh, however, before we paint, uh, we're going to practice sketching an imaginary animal. So, uh, please share any ingredients, any animal suggestions you might want to use for our recipe in the comments below. And I'll use those ingredients to put together our first imaginary animal. So, think about animals with really interesting shapes. Some animals are really huge, like an elephant. Some animals are small, like a tiny little frog. Some animals are long and skinny, like a snake. Think about an animal with a really interesting head or body. Think about animals with interesting texture. Some animals are filled with feathers. Other animals are scaly, like a fish or a snake. Some animals have lots of fur, like a big woolly buffalo. Think about animals with interesting patterns, interesting color. And we'll use those ingredients to put our animal together. We'll go step by step. First, I'll ask you for an interesting shape an interesting animal head. And I'm going to close my eyes and I will think about the shape, the texture, and the pattern of that animal's head. Then I'll ask you for our next ingredient, maybe an animal's body. You'll tell me an animal with an interesting shape, 
texture or pattern on their body. I'll close my eyes think, and imagine that animal's body and then add it to my, to my animal's head. And we'll go step by step until our animal's put together. So, uh, Ms. Miranda, Ms. Jennifer, do we have any suggestions? Got a monkey face. Monkey, okay. Who, who, who told us, who suggested monkey? Tara. All right, Tara, let's try a monkey. Now, uh, you, remember, you can sketch along with, with me. These, this is going to be our practice sketch. So if you have some sketch paper, pull out your sketch paper, and let's begin sketching your animal. If you do not have sketch paper, flip your, flip your painting paper, flip it over, and we can sketch on the back side. I'm going to sketch on this large piece of paper so you can see. Now before I begin, before I begin, I like to close my eyes and imagine that animal that animal ingredient. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to imagine a monkey head. I'm going to pretend like I'm staring at this monkey's head. And I'm going to imagine the, the shape of that monkey's head. Now a monkey does not have a head that is square like a pizza box. A monkey does not have a head that's perfectly round like a soccer ball. A monkey's head uh, kind of maybe looks what is that? What do we call that? Looks like a, like a Hershey's Kiss, kind of. Maybe something like that. And I'm gonna remember we're gonna sketch. Maybe I should. And let's uh, let's actually let's sketch with a dark color. You might want to choose a dark crayon as well. So when we add our paint later on, your dark lines will pop out. So I'm gonna sketch. But remember, sketching is a way for artists to practice our ideas. So this is a way to figure out where my lines are gonna go before I make them permanent. So when I'm sketching, I'm gonna push softly. We don't need to push very hard. We want our lines to, to be soft. So if I make a mark I'm not fond of, you can ignore it. We don't need to erase these lines. I'm gonna sketch these lines until I make, to sketch the shape of my monkey head. Then I need to add uh, a monkey face. So I wanna maybe close my eyes and imagine the monkey's nose. Monkey's nose might look something like that. And a monkey mouth, a happy monkey mouth. Um, little monkey eyeballs, just like that. Now I might save the ears for another ingredient. We might use a different animal for our ears. So I'll, this is gonna be a, a monkey with no ears. But I wanna think about that, the texture. If I reach out and pet this monkey, how would the monkey feel? A monkey is covered with hair, they're mammals. They kind of have hair, so let's give our monkey a little, some monkey hairdo, maybe some monkey whiskers on the side of, their, of this monkey's head, maybe some bushy monkey eyebrows even, for our, to give our monkey some texture. Then I want to think about the, the color of this monkey. And I want to think, I'm going to take, I'm going to close my eyes and imagine this monkey's head and look to see if it has color that repeats. When color repeats, we, that's a pattern. Some animals have stripes, some animals have spots. This monkey is, all, is going to be one color, but maybe your animal, your imaginary animal, has stripes on their head or, stri or spots. If this animal has stri stripes or spots, I draw those stripes or spots. But I've thought, I've, now, that I, we, now that I've sketched the shape, the texture, and the pattern, I'm ready for another ingredient. Do we have another ingredient? Somebody suggested um, a long neck. A long neck. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to imagine, I'm going to pretend like I'm walking through a zoo and see if I can find an animal with a long neck. Can anybody think of an animal with a long neck? I'm thinking of one. It also has a pattern, almost like puzzle pieces all over its body. So I'm going to sketch in this animal's body. I'm, I'm going to wait. I don't want to draw the legs yet. I'm going to try not to draw the tail yet. Just the body. We'll use other animals for the legs and the tail. So this next ingredient is just the body of this long neck. I'm going to draw the shape, which is kind of, lots of animals have a body that's shaped like a peanut. I might draw a peanut shape down there for the body in this long neck. I was, I was imagining a giraffe. Giraffes have long necks. So I have a long giraffe, long neck for a giraffe and a kind of a peanut body for this giraffe. Remember, I'm sketching. Once, I, once I've sketched it in, I can come back and make these lines more permanent. All the lines I want to keep, I can make them more permanent. We want this to look like a giraffe, which means I, um, we need to think about the pattern. Giraffes have big, blocky spots. 
that kind of lock together like a puzzle piece. Close your eyes and imagine a, gir a giraffe. Maybe the, a giraffe you've seen at the zoo. Maybe a giraffe you've read about in a book or you've learned about at school. Big, blocky shapes. I could use my crayon to add color to those shapes, but we might wait to add color when we add our paint. So now I have the shape of my, of my giraffe. We've added the pattern of my giraffe, but think about the texture of that giraffe. A giraffe is, I've never, pet, I've never had a chance to pet a giraffe, but when I look at a giraffe, it looks like they, I know they're covered with short hair, right? Like a horse, but all the way down their neck, also like a horse, I believe they have longer hair, like a mane almost like a mohawk. So let's draw a giraffe mohawk on the back of my giraffe's neck. So now we've drawn the shape, the texture, and the pattern for my giraffe body. So we have our first ingredient, monkey head, second ingredient, giraffe body. We're ready for ingredient number three. Do we have ingredient, another ingredient, Miss Miranda? Yeah, we've got a, a few options you might rope together. We got a goat, maybe goat legs, All right. or goat feet, or duck feet. You know what? Let's save the goat for our, our ears up here. That'll be a good one. But I think duck feet are perfect because I have just a little bit of room from my giraffe body. I'm drawing so big, I have a little bit of room. I think we have just enough room for, for some duck feet down here. So again, I'm gonna close my eyes and imagine a duck waddling around on two legs, right? At the top, at the top of my duck legs are some feathers, right? They're feathery, so we'll draw some feathery duck thighs. Those are the duck thighs. Then they have skinny little duck calves down here. Skinny little duck calves and we know that ducks have webbed feet to help them swim. So I need to draw some webbed feet. Two of them. Draw the shape. Maybe if you ever get out of the swimming pool and it's windy and cold, get little goosebumps. Maybe a little some goosebumps on my duck legs. So now I have two little duck feet. We draw, we, I drew the shape, the texture, and the pattern for each of my duck feet. Giraffe body, monkey head, goat. Let's use that goat ingredient. I like a goat ingredient up here on the, we need some ears. This animal cannot hear us very well. So I'm gonna draw some goat ears. Goat ears are kind of, kind of pointy, I believe. Some goats have kind of floppy ears. Goats have that kind of that coarse hair coming out, and maybe even coming out of their ears like your grandpa. On top of their ears, got coarse hair like this. And then we also need to think about all the other head accessories, right? And goats, all kinds of goats, mountain goats, nanny goats, have horns, right? Maybe some jagged horns like this, just like that mythical sculpture we looked at earlier. We draw some horns, we give our horns some texture. Some like a mountain goat or a, or a ram, their horns spiral around. So when you get ready to make your animal, you can choose an ingredient with head accessories, maybe big moose antlers, maybe antennas like a bumblebee. But we're missing one ingredient. We have, our, we have ears so we can hear, we have a mouth so we can smile and sing, we have our body and legs to dance with, but we need, we're missing a tail. The tail's like the cherry on top of this animal sundae. We need to find a perfect tail. Some tails are long and skinny. Some tails are big and bushy. Some tails are curly. Some tails help animals swim. Some animals are full of feathers. Some animals, uh, some animals have tails that rattle. Do we have any animal uh, suggestions for our animal for our tail? Well, somebody said scales, so maybe like a dragon tail. Yeah. Okay, we can do it. Let's make a dragon tail. So yeah, we can use an imaginary tail. Dragons are an imaginary animal. So I can imagine what my dragon might look like, or I can imagine what a dragon I've seen in a book or a movie or at an art museum. Dragon tails are sometimes long and spiky. Some dragons use their tails to help them fly. Some ant dragons are similar to dinosaurs, which were real, like a stegosaurus, and they have spikes to help them swat at people with their tail. And yes, lots of dragons are covered in scales. Some dinosaurs probably had scales. Snakes have scales, fish have scales. Now our animal is complete. 
So this is an imaginary animal. This is an animal you've never, you would, could never find at a zoo. An animal you could never have as a pet. An animal uh, you would never be able to walk down the street. But if you visit an art museum, we can, we can find imaginary animals like this because artists use shapes, textures, patterns, and their imagination to create um, animals we've never seen before. And that's what you're gonna do now. Each of you is gonna make your own animal using your own ingredient your own ingredients. So we're all gonna work from a different recipe. And I'll walk through, we'll, we'll do this together step by step. So put your sketches to the side or flip your paper over and let's get ready to draw your, your, your imaginary animal. So I'm gonna put this critter over here and grab some paper to paint on. I'm gonna use this big piece of paper so you can see my animal and you can decide if you want your animal to be tall by putting your paper vertical. Or you can decide if you want your animal to be horizontal. Let's look at some, let's look at some more to, give you, to cook up some ideas. Here's a taller animal. It looks pretty buff with a gorilla body and the stork of a pelican or, or a, a head of a pelican or a stork. Here's a frog duck pig. You know, the classic frog duck pig. Here's an animal that looks like they live in the jungle. We can look in the background. And we can learn about that animal's environment or habitat. Here's a walrus. If I look in the background, I can see a pyramid here and there. That animal might live in Egypt. This animal has some interesting head accessories. Looks like there's moose antlers on top of this rhino head. These beautiful striped patterns on the body and little duck, or these are chicken feet. I can tell because there's talons instead of webbed toes. So, Think about some ingredients you might want to use. Decide if you want your animal to be tall or, ver or, or, or long. You can put your paper vertical or horizontal. I think I'm going to have a tall, a tall critter. And just like we did before, we're going to go one step at a time. We're going to think about each animal ingredient. We'll imagine the shape, the texture, and the pattern, and then we'll put it onto our paper. Before we begin, you at home, close your eyes, please. Close your eyes and imagine, in your mind's eye, imagine a zoo. Imagine you're standing out front of your zoo. We're going to use this zoo like a grocery store. We're going to go to our imaginary zoo, the, the zoo in your brain, to pick out each ingredient. So I'm standing in front of my zoo. It says Mr. Andy's Zoo in big purple letters. I'm going to walk into the front door of that zoo. You walk into your zoo and walk up to the very first animal you see. Look into the enclosure and have a staring contest with that animal. Look right into their eyes. And look at the shape of their head. Does your animal have a big head or a small head? Long head like an alligator? Do they have a pointy beak? Look at the shape of your animal's head. And then open your eyes and let's draw that animal's head on your piece of paper. And draw it big. We want to try to draw your animal big so we can add lots of color when we're ready to paint. So I'm going to turn my easel around while you draw your animal's head, and I'll draw, a head of, I'll draw my animal's head back here. Now try not to draw the body. Try not to draw the ears. Save those for our next ingredients. I was thinking about a crocodile head. So I'm going to sketch. Remember, I'm going to start by drawing softly to sketch in that crocodile's head. Just the shape. The big shape of that crocodile's head. Then I'm going to, you, you draw the shape of your animal's head. I want to see what kind of ingredients you choose. I want to see, I'd like to see your final animal once we get everything mixed together. So I'm going to sketch it in, make sure I know where my lines are, where the lines, what lines I want to keep. All those lines I want to keep, I'm going to trace on top of those lines really hard, make those lines super dark, right? All of our keeper lines, we want to make those super, super dark. Ignore any lines you're not fond of, any lines that were practiced. Now I need to give my crocodile a nose so my crocodile can smell things. Make sure you draw your animal's nose. Some animals have no, a nose, like a, like a cat has a nose, like a triangle. Some animals have long noses, like an elephant. Some animals have a beak. Draw. Show us what kind of nose your animal has. And of course, crocodiles have very sharp teeth. I'm going to make mine a, 
a happy crocodile, so I'm going to make it have a, a smile, but it needs to be a very toothy smile. So I'm going to draw some sharp teeth. Make sure your animal has a mouth. Maybe your animal has a tongue, maybe a, a, a unique tongue. Maybe it has a tongue it catches flies with. Maybe your animal has a maybe your animal has a tongue that's slobbery. Or a fork. Or a forked tongue, you know, a forked tongue. So I drew my shape. I have my, I have my crocodile. Uh, I have a crocodile face, eyes, and nose and mouth. But we need some texture. So uh, go back. Go back to the zoo. Close your eyes. Reach out and pet your animal on the head. See how that animal feels. Remember, texture is the way something feels. And we're going to use lines to describe your animal texture. So reach out, pet your animal on the head. If you, is your animal smooth? Maybe it's bumpy and rough. Maybe it's wrinkly like an elephant or a rhinoceros. Maybe your animal is fuzzy like a mouse or super hairy like a buffalo. Maybe your animal has feathers like a peacock. Open your eyes and draw the texture on your animal's head. Crocodiles are scaly. Crocodiles are reptiles. They're covered with scales. They even have sort of spikes like our dragon tail from before on the back of their head. Maybe some scales up here in our crocodile eyes. And also think about your, the color of your animal's head. If your animal has spots or stripes on their head like a tiger or a leopard or cheetah, draw some spots or stripes. Most crocodiles do not have spots or stripes on their face, or maybe they do, some do. There's all kinds of crocodiles. Maybe your crocodile does. Mine's not gonna have spots or stripes. Draw the shape, the texture, and the pattern of your animal's head, and let's get ready for our next ingredient. So put your, your, put your, your drawing tool down. Close your eyes and go back to the zoo. Close your eyes. This time, walk in the front door of your zoo and keep on walking. Walk past that first animal. We need to go find a different animal, animal number two. Stop and take a look at this, this different animal and look at their body. Check out that animal's body. What kind of body does that animal have? Is it big and round, like a hippopotamus? Maybe it's long and skinny like a snake. Look at that animal's body. Look at, reach out and pet that animal's belly. Give it a belly rub. Is it furry like a, uh, like, a, like a puppy? Or is it covered with feathers like a chicken? Flamingo. Or a flamingo, pink feathers. Look at the color. Maybe it's pink like a flamingo. Maybe that, that animal has a, has a color that's one single color, like a pink flamingo, or maybe that animal has spots and stripes all over the body. Pick out an animal with a very interesting body, then open your eyes and let's add that body to your animal, your animal recipe. Just the body. Try not to draw the legs. Try not to draw the tail. Just the animal's body. So just the animal's body. So I was thinking about a tiger, and we said earlier, lots of animals. Close your eyes, go to your zoo, walk around, check out those animals' bodies. A lot of those animal bodies look like peanuts, and the tiger is one of those animals. So I'm going to draw like an, I'm going to draw, a, I'm going to sketch, remember, we're going to sketch the shape of my peanut, peanut body, our peanut body. And then I'm going to add some texture. Tigers are full of fur, so I need to make this body look like it's furry. You might choose an animal, uh, try not to, I mean, try not to draw the tail, try not to draw the legs, just the body. This animal is not going to be able to move anywhere quite yet. Just the body. So I'm adding some furry, some furry lines. Oh, good one. Some Thank furry you. lines with my crayon and maybe, because I need to think about the pattern, of course, Tigers have stripes. Remember, we're going to add some paint, too. So I'm not going to draw all of my patterns quite yet. I want to leave some room to add some paint. Tiger body. You dig? So make sure you draw your shape, the texture, the pattern of your animal body. Then let's push pause and go on to the next ingredient. So put your drawing tool down. If you're not finished with your body, that's A-OK. -okay. You can come back and finish that up later, but let's go back to that zoo and grab ingredient number three. Put your drawing tool down for a moment. Close your eyes and go back to the zoo. This time, when you get ready to go to the zoo, stretch out a little bit and let's run through the front door. Run past the first animal. Keep on running past the second animal. 
and then stop. Close your eyes and look to see how that animal moves around. Do they run like you do? Maybe you're that animal hops. Maybe that animal stomps around with big, heavy feet. Maybe that animal waddles. Maybe it crawls very slowly. Look at your animal's legs. Count the legs. Some animals have two legs. Some animals have four legs. Some animals have eight legs or tentacles. How does your animal move around? Do they waddle? Do they swim? Do they hop? Look at their feet. Some animals have hooves on their feet. Maybe you'll need to draw hooves. Some animals have talons or claws with sharp uh, points. Some animals have webbed toes. Take a look at your, the shape, the texture, and the pattern of your animal's legs. Then open your eyes and let's draw those legs onto your animal's body. Let's see, I was thinking about a frog. So I'm gonna begin by drawing the shape of my, my frog legs. Frogs have four legs, two legs in the back that are big, that are long and hoppy, right? So they can jump. And two legs up front so they don't fall over. So I'm gonna put some big hoppy legs in the back. I'm gonna draw those big shapes of the legs and the feet. And my toes need to be webbed. So those are my big hoppy legs in the back. You draw your own legs. But I need those two legs up front to make sure this frog doesn't fall on its face with webbed toes like that. Remember, we're going to sketch. And then once I've sketched, I can come back in and push hard to make all my, camp, my keeper lines nice and dark. This is important when we're finished sketching and drawing. We're going to add our paint. And these extra dark lines, the lines that I'm pushing hard, use some muscle, will pop out, create a, res a waxy resist when we add our watercolor on top. Any lines I choose not to trace over will disappear. So now I have my shapes. Now uh, frogs, a lot of frogs are smooth. Toads are bumpy though. I might add a few bumps and texture here and there, some bumpy, some curved, little curved lines that make a bumpy texture on this toad. But lots of frogs have patterns. Oftentimes they have spots to help them hide. Some animals use their colors to help them camouflage so other animals don't eat them. Some animals have patterns to help them sneak up and eat animals they're hunting. This, this frog probably has some spots so a big bird doesn't swoop down and chomp them up. So now our animal has a face, animal has a lovely body. This animal has some legs so it can hop around. But this animal cannot hear us well, so we have to go back to the zoo for another ingredient. So push pause. If you're not finished with your legs, A-okay. You can come back and add the detail, the finish your texture and pattern for your legs in just a moment. But push pause, put your drawing tool down, let's go back to the zoo. Close your eyes. This time I want you want to find a, a different animal, but let's be very, very quiet. Be very, very quiet and sneak up to that animal. Sneak up quietly to the enclosure and Whisper to that animal. Go into that animal's conclusion and go psh, 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 psh. And look to see how that animal listens to you. Look at their ears. Look at the shape of that animal's ears. Do they have pointy ears? Do they have floppy ears? Do they have round, fuzzy ears? Look to see if your animal has any head accessories. Anything that sticks off the top of their head. Like antlers or antenna. Reach out uh, and rub those ears. See how those ears feel. Are they smooth? Are they woolly? Look at the shape, the texture, and the pattern of your animal's ears. And let's add those ears, horns, antlers, antenna. Let's give, this, let's give your animal some head accoutrement, right? So close your eyes and add some head stuff, all right? I'm thinking about an animal with, uh, let's think about, uh, how about an elephant? Elephants have big ears. Some, ele some elephants can even fly with their ears. I'm going to draw a big shape. Some imaginary elephants can fly with their ears. Don't, uh, don't take that to science class with you. We can draw some big elephant ears, big shaped up here. Elephants have those big ears so they can hear things, right? So they can hear things from far away. 
Draw the shape of your elephant, or draw the shape of your ears or horns. You choose your own ingredient. I have drawn these the shape from my big elephant ears. Almost look like almost remind me of Horton there. Give it some wrinkles. I well, I'm gonna give my elephant my ears some wrinkles because elephants are wrinkly. They are out in the hot sun all the time, and that's how you get wrinkles. Maybe your maybe your animal has fur on their ears. Maybe your animal uh, has horns that spiral out. Maybe your animal has antlers like a moose. I think we almost have each ingredient, but we're missing one thing. It goes down here on the end of that animal. We're missing a tail. Let's go back to the zoo for our final ingredient, important ingredient. Put the finishing touches on this animal. Close your eyes. This time go around and look at all the different animals. Look at all the tails that you see. Maybe even hop on somebody's shoulders or get on a train and Look at all the, the different tails. Long tails, short tails, bushy tails, curly tails, tails that help us swim, maybe tails that hit the water to, to warn other animals, maybe tails full of feathers, maybe, maybe a stinger. Open your eyes and draw the shape, the texture, the pattern of that animal's tail on the end of your animal. The tail that you saw at the zoo Take it out of your brain and put it on the end of that animal. I have a little bit of room here. Let's do a curly tail, like a pig. Some pigs have curly tails. We'll do a little spiral curly tail, a little pigtail. Some of you might have pigtails. This pigtail is different. Pigs have hair on their head, all over their body. We put a little, put a little hairs on a pigtail back here. And I'll wait to add color when I add my paint. Go ahead, put the finishing touches on your animal tail. You might even add details in the background to tell us where your animal lives. I might put a horizon line back here. Maybe this animal lives here in Nebraska. Maybe there's hills with fields. Maybe there's a little barn over here where the farmer can bring, pull out their combine or maybe need a fence. We'll put, we can put details all around our animal to tell us where your animal lives. You might even tell us what your animal likes to eat. Maybe this animal, my critter here, Frank, he likes to eat broccoli. So I'm gonna draw some broccoli down here so he can eat some broccoli. Maybe Frank likes to read a book. Let's give Frank a book. You can put details all around your animal to tell us even more about your animal. When you visit the museum, you can find each animal and if you look around the animal, you might learn more about that animal. So. Let's push pause again, or don't, you know, put your, put your drawing tool down. Don't physically push pause, because then I'll just stop. We want to continue, but let's, uh, let's go on to our next step. So if you're not finished drawing, that's A-OK. -okay. Put your drawing tool down, and let's get ready to add some color and pattern using our watercolor paint. So I'm going to put my crayons to the side for now, and I'm going to pull, let's pull out our paint our watercolor paint. Now, if you don't have watercolor paint, remember you can add color. You can continue using your crayons. You can use colored pencils or markers. But let's add some, let's practice with some paint. If you, uh, in our supply kit, you, you, we have a, you might have a set of paints like this with a tiny paintbrush. This tiny paintbrush is great for painting tiny things. We might use this little paintbrush today. It might be perfect for painting my tiny spots on my frog legs. It might be perfect for painting my pigtail or my crocodile teeth. So we might use that little brush. I'll put it over here. But let's begin <clears throat> with our big paintbrush and our cup of water. <laughs> so I have a big paintbrush like this. This big paintbrush is perfect for painting all the big shapes. And I have lots of big shapes. Big crocodile head, big elephant ears, big tiger body, big paintbrush. Big paintbrush, perfect for big shapes. So I'm going to start with these big shapes. I'm going to put my big paintbrush in the cup of water, get it dripping wet. But we want, I'm going to scrape the hairdo on the side of the cup so our paintbrush is not too wet. We're going to use these watercolor paints, but we want our color to be bright and colorful. Lots of animals use their colors to show off, like a peacock. So we want to make sure that our paint is uh, bright and colorful. So I'm going to take my paintbrush, put it in the water, let it drip a little bit, scrape the hairdo 
on the side of the cup maybe two times, take my wet paintbrush and put it into my dried up paint to activate that paint. To make that dried up paint wet and ready to ready for me, so it's ready for me to paint. Then I'm gonna take my paintbrush, take those bristles, that's your brush's hairdo. And we always wanna be kind of gentle with my brush as we're loading with paint. Kind of like we're gently petting the paint. Make sure that your hairdo stays nice and neat. It's important when you paint that you keep that your bristles, your brush's hairdo, nice and neat. When we're loading with paint and when we're putting paint onto the paper, so that uh, we want to make sure that our hairdo stays nice and neat. That if, if we're very rough with the brush, if you push it and smush it, if you push it and smush it like this, your hairdo will get very will get messed up. Your paintbrush will have bed head, and that will ruin the brush. We want to keep our paintbrush looking nice and neat. So back and forth, back and forth, gentle, gentle, gentle. The longer I pet the paint like this, the more brush strokes I I make, the more paint will get loaded onto my paintbrush, and eventually that hairdo should turn green. When you have lots of green on your brush, we'll paint with a very, your green will be bright and colorful. And because I'm using that big paintbrush, I can paint quickly. With smooth brush strokes, I can fill in this big shape quickly. And I can paint right on top of my dark crayon lines and they'll pop out because we pushed hard to create a waxy resist. So I can paint right on top of those, those lines and they'll pop right out. When I, when I need more paint, I'll load back up. Now, I painted this head, the head of my crocodile green. Could have been pink, it's imaginary, could have been purple. But I think I'm ready to go to, I'm gonna add color to my body. And I have green on my brush, so before I change colors, very important, before I change colors, take your paintbrush, which is filled with green paint, put it into your cup of water and smush it around a little bit. Take it out of the water, and scrape the hairdo three times on the side of the cup. One, two, three. That'll help us clean our brush. So now my brush is nice and clean. So when I load up with my next color, let's maybe make, let's make this an imaginary tiger. Let's make it a blue tiger. So now my brush is clean. I can put my paintbrush into my blue paint to keep my blue paint blue, right? Every time you change colors, it's important to, mix, to rinse off your brush so that we avoid mixing our paints in our paint tray. So I can add blue right on top of my lines. I can create this blue tiger with my big brush painting that big shape quickly. I can efficiently, you can take your time, do your best work, but with that big brush, I can paint smart, right? So we're painting smart. Take your time, do your best work with smooth brush strokes just like this. Now, if we wanna do some color mixing, we can mix right on top of that paper, right? We know our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. We can use our primary colors to make secondary colors and use our primary, mix our secondary colors with our primary colors to make tertiary colors. We can do our, if we want to mix our colors, it might be best to mix our colors right on the paper. So I painted this tiger body blue. I know that if I mix red and blue, we'll make purple. So if I want to have a purple tiger body, I can paint with red right on top of that blue. But remember, I have blue on my brush, put it in, before I load up with red, I need to put it in the water, scrape the hairdo three times, then grab my red paint. I can take my red paint, paint right on top of my blue body, and my red and blue are going to mix together to make my very own purpley color. So you can mix your own colors. Experiment by painting with one color. Maybe let it dry a little bit. Rinse off your brush and paint their second color right on top of it. So far, I've been using my big brush a lot. Before we finish today, let's practice with my tiny brush. Let's paint these crocodile teeth. And this crocodile does not brush its teeth often, so its teeth are going to be yellow. All right. Hopefully, your teeth are bright and white, but this crocodile does not use a, paint, a toothbrush the way he should. Maybe just start scratching at it. So. Well, So I'm going to use my little brush. Just like before, we're going to use that little brush carefully, keeping my hairdo nice and neat, load up with lots of paint, and then I can use that little brush. It's perfect for painting these little shapes, those little nooks and crannies. Paint carefully with smooth brush strokes so you put the paint right where you want it. I can add some yellow teeth. 
can co I could continue and add some spots. Before I'm finished, I could add some color to my background. If your color lives, if your animal lives someplace warm, you'd use lots of warm colors. If your animal lives someplace cool, you'd use lots of cool colors in your background. Give your animal some uh, pattern. Maybe use paint carefully to create stripes or spots. Take your time, add some color, <clears throat> and when your animal's finished, I hope you'll share a picture of your of your animal recipe by posting it to today to today's Facebook event page. So when you once when you finish putting all your ingredients together, drawing the shape, the texture, and the pattern for each animal part, and you've added and you've added some color, take a photo, post it to the event page on Facebook for today's art adventures. Be sure to follow us on Facebook to find out more about all of Jocelyn's art from Expar art from afar experiences, including virtual art camps, which are beginning next week. Jocelyn is offering uh, virtual art camp experiences throughout the month of June and July. July offerings will be posted on June 12th, and we'll, be, we'll see you here again next week to make some more art. Thanks for, art with, thanks for making art with me today. Adios. Sweet. Oh no. Good grief. All right, there we are. <laughs>